Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Zero Gaming here. And this time, I actually waited until the stream is over. So yay, a big W for me for being patient. But anyway, I really, really am conflicted about the fact where we get unscheduled event as compared to what we're expecting to get based on the schedule we have in JP like before. Personally, I do like the surprises that we can get unscheduled event coming up way earlier than before, but it also hurts a little bit on my resources planning as to what we're going to be expecting future down the line. And going with the speed of amount of event that we'll be getting at this current moment, I'm pretty sure the developer is planning something between our server and JP server. Maybe they'll merge like what they did with WFF. Personally, I think it's a very smart decision. You don't have to have so many team managing this particular server and it saved the budget of the developer as well. So while there may be a lot of surprises going on forward, I still think it's a very wise decision. But anyway, let's not talk about my takes on the uh, global changes. Let's move on into what we came today for, and that is to rank all the FR unit in the upcoming events. <laughs> no matter when he's gonna be released, no matter how much he's been delayed, and no matter who he's up against, Bart will always, always be the last in this current era. He's just not great, that's all I can say. His FR has a decent uh, condition, which adds up to 75% on turn for the entire party, and that's about it. Nothing really special about it, except being really easy to fulfill. He has a win and charm in peril, which based on his auras, which means you don't have to rely on buff and debuff for this to land. While this is actually a nice niche, it's really really not needed as much as before. So this is just something extra to have just in case if the boss is unable to take any debuff and you need to apply wind elemental attack. Also, he has gravity attack, which I guess it's nice, but there's a lot of units that have it even in their LD core and in Bart's LD core as well, so you don't really need anything else or have him in the party for this. One thing I still like about Bart is that he does have Brave Refund after turn during when his BT is active. Although a lot of supportive units like Garnet, Sarah already has this, it's still a very nice thing to have at the back of your pocket more units to have this kind of utility, especially since Aerith, the strongest supportive unit, doesn't actually have Brave Refund in her kit. So it's a very welcoming addition to add in your roster, but, but it's by no means game-changing. And of course, Squall being his partner and him being Sword Unique Weapon, although he's a supportive unit, so being holding a high-level Unique Weapon is not really going to help a lot since you're not relying on him doing damage, which brings me to the con part, because bars just do really, really shitty damage. Just really bad. He deals around 5 to 6 AoE HP attack, and even in the single target department, he only has 5 to 6 single target HP attack. So it's really, really bad. And he has a selfish high armor, which means he lacked the idea of having a party-wide friendly uh, high armor, and then his BT requires stacks, which require bars to take several turns, three turns to be exact, for him to build up the stacks up to three stacks, and it only provides a 30% HP damage cap up at the second stacks and more, which means even if you go up to the final stack, it doesn't increase. 30% HP, 30 HP damage cap up is the norm, but you have to get it after the second stack. So why create this kind of condition when 30% HP damage cap out is not even a, a huge margin of uh, differences compared to other units BT effect? Note that the entire roster that we're having right here have 30% HP damage cap out in their BT effect. So why give bars this kind of restriction when others don't even need this kind of restriction? So yeah, bars is basically just really, really bad. In all the aspects that you're looking for in the character, he's not really that good in the supportive department, he's really bad in the DPS department, so he's just all around and then unable to land himself in anywhere. 
yeah, that's just bots at this current stage. I really hope they do give us a rework, early global rework on his kit, just to make him a little bit more relevant because I already have his kit, so I'll max him out regardless. But yeah, it's just kind of sad. Yes. So Bart struggled with identity during the supportive and DPS department where he doesn't land in either of them. Vincent sort of uh, have the same stance in that situation. He does have a very nice FR as a main because he procs 75% on turn and then he has a 50% HP damage cap up in his FR. So that's nice. Also, Vincent allows the enemy to stop gaining any buff with his BT effect, and of course, his BT does reduce the stats, thus crippling the enemy uh, with the attack down, speed down, defense down and stuff, but with Iris being there and providing a way higher value for what her BT can do, it's just, it's just not looking that great for Vincent in this case. He does get a little bit additional damage in his follow-up attack, but it doesn't really justify him good enough to be a strong DPS candidate. So Vincent's struggle a little bit in my uh, in my opinion is that he has low damage for to be considered very strong or relevant DPS. And if you're gonna consider him as a utility or, or a bot unit, he doesn't have enough in his kit to be a very strong utility user. All he does is a little bit damage here and there and then with some stat crippling the enemy stats. But it's not significant enough for Vincent to be really relevant in that department. So in my opinion, if you really want to run him mostly is the fact that he's your favorite because Vincent being Final Fantasy VII and one of the more popular unit there, he might have a lot of people pulling for him, but I can't really put him any higher in the list, especially considering how strong of the other units that we have. Anyway, after Vincent, it's just gonna be really, really hard to rank because every other unit that come after him is just really, really strong and really relevant. And they don't really differ much in terms of their ranks in between each other. They are all interchangeable. And surprisingly, there's not one unit that particularly stand out as compared to all of this upcoming unit. All perform their role specifically well, so yeah. Shuffle. But I'm gonna put Setzer right here, who was the runner up in the previous uh, roster run. So, having him being delayed from his original release kind of hurts him a little bit, considering the fact that he has to deal with future units that performs so well compared to what he can provide. Yes, he still provides a lot of utility like Freeze, Delay, Rainbow. He does have the BT effect, which is quite similar to Kina, except having a RNG 70% chance instead of 100% like what Kina does. And he does have a very nice 50 damage, 50% HP damage cap up in his kit. But while he has all of this, he lacks really good damage on his own turn, and then his Kit is really RNG reliance. Even his BT effect, the, the duration of his BT effect can be RNG as well. You can go up from 6 turn to 12 turn, but to be honest, 6 turn is not really a big issue in that department. The only saddest part is having Sadza means it doesn't entirely allow you to forget every single shit what, like, like what Kina does, where you just use your HP attack during launches, even if your bravery is less than 1000, for example. Setzer can sometimes disappoint you in that department, so for me, he's kind of a risk character, he still performs his stuff really good, and he's more like an insurance where just in case you don't perform really that well, he can help you in that department, but it's not 100% for him. So unless you like that kind of element of surprise, I would say Setzer doesn't really go up any higher in the list. It pains me a little bit and it's really hard to rank him right here, especially given that I really really like his FR as a main because it's really easy to proc and he has very good uh, HP damage cap out with the 50%. But if that's the only kit I'm going for, might as well run Vincent since Vincent actually has more 
percentage in his FR as a main in the HP damage bonus. But anyway, uh, moving on from Setsa, the upcoming one would be... Dorgan, yes, the previous champion actually become the fourth in my list right here. Alright, so Dorgan, which is the center of the entire roster here, still is a very strong damage dealer. What damage he provides, he doesn't provide on turn but off turn. Dorgan is very specific where he he can be abused to perform very cheese mechanic and he has a uh, sword unique weapon which makes it really easy for him to do big damage. You As long as you have the right setup, namely Iris, you can actually allow Dorgan to perform two follow up every single turn from your allies as long as they can launch. So with units like Aranea for example, you can perform really really well with Dorgan, uh, especially now given the fact that his BT actually allows everyone to unbreak the enemy after turn and also provide win and chance. So it essentially provides his condition and also provides a very Sephiroth BT like where you can unbreak the enemy every single turn. And you don't really have to bring units like Aranea where she can have her own breaks anymore. Everyone can do the breaks as long as you have Dorgan's BT. And if you have Iris in the party, you can actually break, launch, and unbreak it. So it makes it really easy to set up for Dorgan. And because Iris is such a strong unit, it's almost, uh, if you're going for the green crystal, it's almost you're going to bring Iris every single time for the uh, FR battery anyway. As we move on to the list, there's not much to say about the cons part of all this character because they're so independent of their own kit with all the upcoming BT and FR that comes with their kit together. So I would say that the problem with Dorgan will probably gonna be of course tied to Win Elemental and he relies a lot on breaking the enemy. So if you're having facing a bravery flow enemy, which is very uncommon, then he will suffer a lot. You might as well not bring him at all because he's gonna be really useless there. And he has split HP attack on his follow-up, so it's not a big deal if you're dealing with two enemies, but if you're dealing with three, you might need a Kina in the party to allow Dorgan to uh, to cap with his attack. So I think that's the only flaws that I can see with Dorgan. Otherwise, still a very strong character despite being fourth in the list, so you can imagine how strong the upcoming three characters will be. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, Rosa being here not because she's bad, it's just the two upcoming that is right in front of her is just way too good for me to put her above them. So yeah, Rosa is basically, she has a very generic FR where it's 75% on turn and can be super chargeable. And Rosa herself has FR battery in her kit, so she can supercharge her own FR, which makes it really good. Like a stronger Penelo in this situation, because Penelo is 70% on turn, and then Rosa is 75%, so basically an extra 5%, but with Echo, yeah. So what Rosa provides, aside from just her FR, is that she actually has strong follow-up attack, which deals 3 full AoE HP attack and heals the entire party. So it's kind of like what Braska and Sarah gets. I think most supportive units are going to get this right now, just to put them in the league of a DPS character, which is kind of weird, like I said, because Vincent actually deal way less damage than Rosa do. So you, you see my struggling over here. But yeah, Rosa also overheals the party right now, so she can ensure that your party always stay in the healthy level given that her condition of her FR is your party having to stay 100% or more in your HP when taking a turn. And of course, like I said before, Rosa do very, very, very decent damage for a supportive unit. Even in her converted bravery attack right now, she does 8 single target HP attack along with 3 follow up, so it makes up to 11 HP attack. That is very, very similar to what Tifa can do. Maybe just lacking a little bit more, but still. That's insane for a supportive unit to do what a DPS can do and even more. So I think the only problem with Rosa is that if you're using her FR as a main, then stage where HP poison or set is a thing and Rosa is going to suffer a little bit there. 
So probably just don't use her FR, it's not a big issue. And of course, she's a bow unique weapon type, so not a very common one. Might have some issue if you run her as your main DPS, but snap, that's not really going to be the case anyway. So, like I said, not much of a cons that we're looking at in the upcoming units. So I think Rosa is a very, very new player friendly, especially she can do so much more as a supportive unit. She got the supercharging, she got the heal, she got the battery, she got the damage. So yeah, very, very good unit, especially for newer players. Definitely pull for her if you're a new player. And veterans can enjoy using her as well, although personally, I think I'm going to skip back and we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> So like I said before, everything after Vincent is interchangeable. I'm going to put Reno here right at the second one. So hear me out, Reno as a main in my opinion for his FR is not really that great. He does increase a 50% on enemy turn if the enemy perform physical or range attack. 20% if the enemy perform magic attack. So this is really have to depend, very stage dependent. And he does only provide 20% on party turn. It's not that you can't really uh, get the most out of it from his FR. It's still really easy to get it up to 999% with often team composition. But there's just so many better options for often team composition like Beatrix or like Ruby Kante. And if you're running an often, often team composition with Reno FR, you're bound to bring all those characters anyway, so might as well just go for all those FR instead. So I think his FR as a main is just not highly recommended, but let's look at the pro first of what he does. So he has the hardest hitting HP attack, which is fucking weird because they give this kind of character 11 full HP attack. Like why? Why Square Enix? I really have no fucking clue. Excuse my language here because I'm really pissed that they gave Reno this much kit. And let's not forget the fact that he has so much utility in this particular HP attack as well. He delays the entire party by two turns, uh, one turn to himself. And then he applies Pyramid which is his uh, LD debuff on the enemy every time he uses the HP attack. So it's not just hit hard, he also packed with utility. Why Square Enix? Why give him this kind of utility there? I really don't understand. If you're gonna give him this much utility, why give him a, a, such a huge amount of HP attack? And it's full HP attack. It's not split. So, why? <laughs> I really don't understand. What was the what was going through Square Enix's mind when they designed his kit? Given that Yuffie only got nine HP dumps, and then Renoa, which comes much later with her Echo still only has 9 AoE HP attack on her HP attack. I mean, yes, it does provide, she does have a little bit higher HP damage cap, but it's still not enough to justify her being lower than Reno here when Reno provides so much in terms of his kit. So why? I really don't understand. But yeah, I think the only problem with Reno is that uh, right now he's way viable to bring in an often team composition because his HP attack actually delays the party so it allows more counter to go in but he himself still doesn't have counter so mm, not that it's much of an issue right now because like I said he does provide utility and I guess pyramid only lasting for one turn can be quite risky but again if you're looking at the fact that where you're bringing often team Kong with Reno you're bringing units like Oren, Ruby Kante they're bound to be a tank that you bring, which will protect your party. So that again, won't be too much of an issue. And Reno has a very good uh, benefit of, he can work in often team composition, but he can also work in often team composition with his HP attack being used in his BT phase, since it hits really hard. I think the only issue with Reno that is that he is using a dagger unit weapon. And let's be honest, you might have a dagger unit weapon lying around, but for most people, they actually don't have it because that we don't have a lot of dagger anyway. I mean, lock is coming up next soon, so you probably want to start making one, I guess. But I think Reno personally don't have much of an issue as a character. Like I said, he works well with a lot of King Kong, very, very, very versatile. But just the dagger itself is going to be an issue if you want to do the highest damage possible. Yeah. 
Uh, of course, never use his skill 1 because it delays the enemy, which makes no sense. There doesn't, doesn't really change anything on his original kit, except more HP downs, which is not necessary because he's going to press his HP attack anyway, but yeah. Okay, so the final, the winner here is going to be Wise this today. So I'm actually debating a little bit on whether or not to put Wise here because while he has uh, Link attacking like Core, he doesn't actually attack the enemy while the enemy takes turn or target the enemy that he's linked with because his Link is tied to his EX buff, not, not like Core where he selects uh, a particular ally. But anyway, I was debating originally whether to put Wise this high up, especially when Dorgan can perform the same amount of follow up attack that he does. But one thing to note is that Wise uh, follow up attack is actually splash, and it splash eighty percent of his main target. So that's almost like full HP attack, just eighty percent. As long as you keep your HP damage up enough, Wise will be maximize his damage in that department. So that one is sweet for him. Not. But of course, that itself is not enough to justify him being this high up in the list. What I really like about Wise is that his BT effect actually has a very unique mechanism tied to it. So what it does is it provides like a true HP damage, much like what Leo uh, LD call or LD provides, but not just to single target, it even applies to AoE as well. So you can think of it like a Luna Freya effect, but it actually scales with your force time, which makes it really nice because 10% of your entire force time, given with units like Astos, for example, it makes up a lot of ideas where even if you hit the hard cap with Astos, you can even do even, even more damage with Weiss. So that part itself makes Weiss a very, very interesting character to boost the overall damage of your party, not just through the follow up attack, but also through his BT effect. Also, Wise FR is, um, I mean, if you take a look, 55% on turn may look a little bit bad, but he does provide a 50% on himself off turn, which means as long as his preemptive attack, unlike Core, as long as he performs his preemptive attack before the ally, it will add up with 15%. For himself, since he'll perform the preemptive attack before his turn, and he'll perform the attack again after his own turn, which makes it up to the extra 30% of what he has in addition to the 55%. So that'll be up to 85%. And then for allies, it's gonna be 45% plus uh, 15%. So it's a 60% on turn for allies and 80% on turn for himself. But of course, it also include the 5% party often. You don't have to really care about Wise off turn because Wise doesn't actually perform any off turn aside from the link attacking preemptive attack prior to his own turn and your party's turn. He won't attack when the enemy attacks. However, he does need a melee to be combo with his FR HP damage condition. So in my opinion, Wise, unless you're bringing a full on melee, um. It's just not the best, in my opinion, because it doesn't provide any HP damage cap up, and the condition is quite restrictive if you're planning, unless you're planning to pull a full on melee party. But otherwise, Wise is just not really there for the FR as a main. I think it's better to use it as an echo, considering the fact that he does have the preemptive prior and after the echo itself. So, yeah, I think it's better to leave it as an echo. So yeah, I think that's about it. We have um, some unknown characters that might be coming, and my guess is gonna be Cloud and Quinn. Sorry, not Quinn. Cloud and Nabat. Yeah, Cloud and Nabat. Both are actually really interesting characters. The bot actually perform really good damage overall. If they're gonna be in the ranking, I'll put Cloud roughly, probably above Rosa, and then Nabat probably around uh, Setzer area. But yeah. Mainly, I, I don't want to go too deep into their character kit because we're not confirmed to get their character uh, yet. But Cloud does have 50% HP damage cap up, which is really nice for him to perform really, really good damage. Anyway, uh, my pool plans for all this character roster is going to be a must pull for Dorgan, a must pull for Bards because I already have Bards kit anyway, so I pull for his FR while pulling for Dorgan's BT. 
And then the next Moss pool is probably going to be Weiss because um, he's a very interesting character. I think most people is going to pull for him. And then I'm going to put Reno on the bench on whether or not I want to pull for him. I don't really need him, but he does offer up really interesting mechanics where with the self-delay. Um, skipping Vincent, skipping Sedza, skipping Rosa definitely. If a newer player considering Sedza and Rosa as your go-to because they actually provide really good utility and support for newer players. But considering we might get Cloud and uh, Nabat, hmm, I think I'm going to skip Nabat as well if we do get her here. But if we get Cloud, I definitely want to pull Cloud because he's one of my favorite characters. But yeah, that is my plan so far. So what about you guys? Do you guys have a specific characters in mind that you must have here? I think a lot of people mentioned to me also that they want to pull for Dorgan because Dorgan, like I said, offer a really abusable mechanic. Yeah, I think that's about it guys. So let me know down in the comments what your pool plans is and how would you rank the characters? Is it the same as what I did or is it slightly different? Let me know. Thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.